This tutorial is all about three allotropes or forms of carbon, graphite, diamond and fullerenes, and how the uses can be related to their properties and how these properties can be explained by their structures and bonding. Our first task is to understand what's meant by the term allotropes. Now, allotropes are different structural forms of the same element. In other words, they consist of the same atoms, carbon atoms, but joined together in different ways, by different bonding or in different structural forms. Carbon is an element in group 4, and it has four outer electrons. That means it can make up to four covalent bonds. So one allotrope, diamond, has this giant structure where each carbon atom is joined to four others. When we talk about a giant structure we mean a structure which goes on for many billions of atoms in all directions and this picture only shows a small section of that giant structure. Graphite also has a giant structure where the carbon atoms are arranged in these hexagonal layers but the layers are only held to each other by very weak attractions. Buckminster fullerene is very different. Buckminster fullerene, as shown here, has got 60 carbon atoms arranged in a ball and there are various other fullerenes with different numbers of carbon atoms in balls. That's a simple molecular structure. Now starting with one of the allotropes, diamond, we need to explain two of its uses in terms of the properties that diamond has and then also explain the properties of diamond in terms of its structure and bonding. Let's concentrate on diamond structure first. So each of these carbon atoms has got four bonds going to four other carbon atoms. These are single covalent bonds which are very strong. Now because these single covalent bonds are very strong, it means that it takes a lot of energy to separate them from each other, which gives it a high melting point. It also makes it very hard because it's difficult to break or snap each of these bonds. Now because all four of the electrons in carbon are being used in the four bonds, there are no free electrons in diamond and therefore diamond can't uh, conduct electricity. So the properties of diamond we need to know are that it doesn't conduct electricity and this is because there are no free electrons to carry the current through the uh, diamond structure. Diamond is hard because it's got strong covalent bonds which aren't easily broken and its regular structure means there are no weak planes or weaknesses within the structure. It has a high melting point because the strong covalent bonds need a high temperature or a lot of energy in order to break them. Diamond is used in cutting tools because it's very hard and also because it's got a high melting point which means that if the end of the cutting tool gets very hot through friction it won't melt. Diamond's also used in jewellery because it's lustrous, that means it catches the light, and because it's colourless. Again for graphite we need to know two of the uses of graphite and be able to explain those in terms of graphite's properties but also we need to be able to explain the properties of graphite in terms of its structure and its bonding. In graphite each of the carbons is joined to only three other carbon atoms by covalent bonds which means that each carbon atom has got one of its four electrons spare and not involved in bonding. Each of these electrons are what are called delocalized electrons, in other words not fixed to any particular carbon atom. And that means that there is a, a sea of mobile electrons, free electrons, which can carry electricity through the graphite structure. So graphite conducts electricity. Although the bonds within the hexagonal layers are very strong, and therefore there's a high melting point, there are only weak attractions between one layer and the next layer. And that means that these layers can easily slip or slide over each other, which means that graphite is soft and slippery and useful for using as a dry lubricant. So graphite conducts electricity because these delocalized electrons can move and carry current through the layers. 
It's slippery because the weak attractions between the layers of atoms enable the layers to slide over each other. And it has a high melting point because there are strong covalent bonds within the layers which need a lot of energy to break. Graphite is used in lubricants because it's slippery. Uh, it's slippery because it has weak attractions between the planes. It's also used as lubricants in machinery because it's got a high melting point and this is because of the strong covalent bonds within the planes. It's used in pencil leads because it's slippery, again because of the weak attractions between the planes and also because it's black and therefore will mark the paper. Here's a past paper question. Carbon can exist in different solid forms. What's the name given to the different solid forms of the same element? The word is allotrope. Graphite slippery explain why using ideas about its structure. The diagram may help you. Uh, it has weak attractions between the layers. So they can slide over each other. Graphite is a good conductor of electricity. Explain how it conducts electricity. Uh, it has delocalized electrons. Which can carry electricity or can allow the electricity to flow. And diamonds used to make cutting tools give two reasons. Why? Well, the first reason is it's hard, and the second reason is it has a high melting point. And there's the answers from the mark scheme. Make sure that you do use these key terms and phrases which are on the syllabus and not try and make up your own version of them. Uh, often your own versions aren't acceptable. Another question. Graphite's another form of carbon. Look at the structure of graphite. Graphite's used as a lubricant because it's slippery. Explain why graphite's slippery using ideas about structure and bonding. Uh, it has weak attractions between the layers. So they can easily slide over each other. And graphite has a high melting point. Explain why using ideas about structure and bonding. It has strong covalent bonds. within the layers which need a lot of heat energy to break them. And again here are the answers from the Mart scheme.